Hey everybody, this is Jeff Wilson from the Total Body Running Podcast. Woo! Hope all is well. I had a nice little burst of motivation and uh, I wanted to record one of the next episodes. This will be the first solo episode where I uh, I just talk about some uh, run training, this, that, and the other. And uh, I'm just very saddened that William's ever not here, but they are on vacation, and so that's how it works. So there you go. But with that said, today's topic is going to be why you're not getting faster. This is, of course, on the Total Bunny Running Podcast, where you are trying to become a faster, stronger, and a more resilient runner, reducing injuries, enjoying life all the more, and uh, this is the right place to be. I have a new announcement to make in a, in a, uh, about a month. I'll, I'll bring the date later. I will be launching a 12-week program. I have announced this kind of stuff a couple times in the past, but I will be doing a special discounted bonus for the first 10 people that come and join. And I will mention that again at the end of this episode so please stay tuned for a couple more details with that but let's dive right in so this is going to be really good in uh, in conjunction with the next podcast that has already been shot um, with Willie and myself talking about sprinting and why that's important so this is going to be just generally talking about why you're not getting faster so Think about this from an all-around training perspective, not just your all-out speed. But I am going to start there in point one, typically why somebody may not be getting faster on a consistent basis, or you might just be hitting a plateau, is because you're not working on your max speed. I don't care if you're training for a marathon, I don't care if you're training for ultras, this is an aspect of training that completely gets overlooked in the distance running world, or at least mostly. Over the last couple decades, I would say strides has become a normal thing, and that's good. That's a good start. That's a good maintenance um, training element that you can add. You know, you do four or five or six strides of maybe 80, 100 meters or 15, 20 seconds at like a sub-maximal effort. So let's just say 85, 90% of max speed just for the sake of the moment. Um, You can work on your form. You can try to work on being smooth you can work on your breathing you know maybe it's a good place to test a couple things out you can do these even on on hills i like varying that up right outside my house which you cannot see here is a nice like about four percent grade it's perfect for some like after after run strides but that's not why what what i'm talking about and if you if you if you check into the next episode will and i do talk about a couple different types of like or it's kind of cyclically going through different types of strides and kind of working your way up to different speeds but working on your max speeds is uh absolutely utterly important to continue improving and so why that is is I, i'm just going to keep be very simple with it let's just say um your max speed is <clears throat> So let's just say whatever your max speed is, let's not get like into the numbers of it. If you plateau in that area and or you're just simply not working on this as you age, which depending on your age is very important to this to this point. um, If you're not working on those mechanics, your other areas of training, like let's just use threshold, for example, at some point, I believe will suffer. So yes, you can continue working aerobically. You will if like if you're a beginner runner, if you just start running, you're probably going to get faster because your aerobic development is just going to keep on um, improving. Whereas um, it, then and then of course you can work on your threshold, uh, your tempo efforts, and then you can get into your faster intervals, your anaerobic intervals, your VO2 max intervals, those types of things. Um, yes, you will improve especially if you're structuring those things well, you will most likely improve for quite some time. And I, this is an arbitrary length of time that I'm giving right now. But at some point, your max speed 
if you can't go faster, this is going to sound so stupid, but if you can't go faster than what you were able to, let's say a year ago, those other areas of aerobic development can only go so far because your max speed is only this. So let's take sprinting, for example. Sprinting lets you, you know, 8, 10, 12 seconds. Well, if, you, if, you're, if you're not working on that maximal speed, then the next variable of your, of your ability to run a 400 or your ability to run 60 seconds at a certain spa- speed, or let's make it even simpler and say a mile. At some point, that is going to suffer because you can only go so fast if you're not working on your maximal speed, if that makes sense. Hopefully, I'm, I'm describing this well, but... I uh, I totally believe that this is something that is underutilized, um, completely underrated, and is why most people don't improve or at least plateau to some degree. And I think people that think that they peak at 28, 29, 30, 32, I think a lot of that comes to this. And then the I, I also believe this is kind of a hot take. Here's my hot take for the day. I believe that uh, other than some of the physiology that's been researched where you can you can develop aerobically over a long period of time i think people just continue to move up in their um in their distances and they'll move up typically pretty quickly because they're not seeing success at their lower levels i'm not just talking high school and college and stuff people start off doing like some 5k's and stuff and then they get to a point where they just don't feel like they can go faster and then they dabble with the marathon with the half this and then they go up because there's this huge sea of possibility of improvement because you can kind of continuously work on your aerobic development and then they stick they stay in those areas and then they don't really do too many speed workouts relative to their 5k speed and so we'll use the 5k in the marathon let's say your 5k is your sprinting relative to the first example I mentioned, but relative to it to a marathon, if you're never working on getting your 5K faster, yeah, you'll improve in your marathon for quite some time. Let's, let's say you run one a year for several years. You'll probably improve upon it, especially if like conditions allow for um, good improvements, injuries are low, th- like you know, taking some of the obvious variables into account or out of the equation for the moment, let's say. Uh, Yeah, you'll improve to some degree, but then you will get to a point where those two race abilities clash. And and some of it will come down into your confidence as well. When you think, well, I can only run a 30-minute 10K, I want to qualify for Boston in the marathon, and I need to run, let's say, 11-minute miles or 1045 or something like that per mile. It's like, well, you're probably going to need a much faster 5K. Uh, those are just off the top of my head, by the way. But you're, you're probably going to want to start aiming for, you know, I don't know, closer to 25, 26, 27 minutes. Um, but again, sorry, I'm, I'm not looking at the VO2 charts right now with that. This is just kind of a, off the top of my head, probably will end up making sense with those numbers. And... Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll leave that part there. I, I just think I, I think you need to work on max speed and how to do that. I think start with some easy things with hill, hill strides, flat strides, some downhill strides, then add um, sprints to this, 8, 10, 12 seconds, which we'll get more into that in the next episode. And then um, from there, then you can start maybe working on some of the things that are deficient in your form and then uh, simply just keep sprinting once a week somewhere in that ballpark for most people it's probably realistic to do once every two weeks or 10 to 15 days but uh, don't overthink it just have it a part of your training and then eventually uh it, it won't be something you have to think about so there you go all right so then on that note point number two will be uh not varying up your training enough so now this goes to all the energy systems that i mentioned earlier Oftentimes I've noticed, and I've 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 had this this happen quite a bit in my old training training life. I was I grew up in high school and college in the early to, uh, the, basically the, just the two thousands is a good way to put that. And training was like developing, but we didn't really have like YouTube and social media to this effect. So strength training wasn't a big deal really yet. It was getting there, but like all out speed and stuff like that. Like we were more focused on VO two and like I love Jack Daniels' training. If you've never read that, um, he has his volume three book is solid gives you a good framework and an understanding of how physiology works as well as just a basic way to train however it's also very boxy and i think that's where like i know like where that's where i was at in high school to a little degree of um 
uh, to a little degree of college. It was just very aerobic based. And that's fine. You're developing your aerobic system. But I got to the point my fourth year where I, my speed was so slow. I, I just, my, to go back to point one for a second, my max speed was, was I mean, my eighth grade self, so 15, 14 years old, 14 years old, I could out sprint my 21, 22 year self, two year old self. That's not okay. In, especially in this context, you know, some people might have a different background or they heavily were in sprinting or something like that or more anaerobic sports and then moved to distance running. But even with that said, in this example, almost in no case would that end up checking out. So I worked on it for a, a good solid year and I, I was plateauing in my 5K. Uh, I couldn't get under 16 I mean, things, I just was a mess. We were doing VO2 workouts, tempo runs, and it just felt flat all the time. Once I started working on my all speed, all of a sudden I could then run under 28 seconds for a 200 in practice. And like there was things started to turn over. Hey, I could run a 56 second quarter at the end of a meet again, you know, on, on an indoor track or 56, 57, 58 even. And it was like, okay, it's not incredible. It's not where I probably should have been if these things had been worked on cyclically for a long period of time, but at least I was improving. Then I could take that, and I still remember going into my next out that next outdoor track season, and then all my workouts that I was plateauing in all of a sudden just clicked. I st- I'll never forget doing a five by twelve hundred meter day with my uh, teammate Tyler, and it was probably, especially given the context of the situation, it was probably in the top 10, 15 workouts of my entire life. Uh, I, I just I negative splitted the entire thing. I felt so confident because I had been working on. A lot of different areas of speed, max speed, my anaerobic um, intensities. I was racing a little bit shorter, and that was again. You go back to my 5K marathon example, and this could this would check out just in a much more broader sense there in terms of distances. But it's still like the the idea is the same here, at least very close. And so anyway, I think looking at all areas of training, including strength training and your recovery and a couple of those other things which I'll get to in a second that are not in your typical head but when you think of training you want to always be trying to fill that chart if you will however many you end up defining in your chart how many slices there are you know you have your anaerobic you have your your threshold your max speed you know leave it there for for a moment and you want to be working on those things most of the time, most of the year. And I know it's an overgeneral way of putting it. You know, a miler is not going to train anywhere near the same as a marathoner. Um, and a marathon is obviously a very extreme example of aerobic ability. But like I said earlier, you still need to be working on max speed to some degree. It's just probably going to be quite a bit less than like for a 5K runner. You know, so you do, there are percentages, take a look at that. I don't have any charts that are popping up or anything like that. Uh, we'll probably make some posts that show those kind of graphs in the future. Uh, that is very helpful to see. So you can see like how much of your time should be dedicated to certain things. But either way, when you are not varying up your training, at some point, what's been lacking will pull you down. And it's easy to run run by it. It's easy to just kind of skate by it and not really worry about that. Uh, but at some point, it will bite you in the butt. And that's just all there is to it. So reevaluating your training, getting outside help, getting some another pair of eyes on it, on what you've done and what's gone right, what's gone wrong is a great way to start and uh, to f- kind of figure out the puzzle pieces that are missing and just go from there. And... Last but certainly not least, point three is not doing the basics consistently. So I referenced a moment ago very briefly stuff like sleep and recovery. Although there's multiple parts to this, I'm not trying to cheat and have seven points in one, but uh, kind of is, I guess. And if, if you're on Instagram or if you look at my Instagram, I just made a post um a day or two ago about just how to live healthier and all that stuff is really simple it's having good sleep hygiene drinking probably more water than you normally do um 
eating eating well as general as that is those are simplistic things that honestly are probably underrated for most people not doing them consistently as consistency is king as i like to put it that is where you'll end up um you'll end up uh finding again kind of the puzzle piece reference or analogy i made earlier you will have some puzzle pieces missing at some point. It'll either result in an injury because you're nutrient deficient, you're dehydrated even though you don't feel dehydrated very often. These aren't extreme things. This is just a cyclical thing as you increase your training, as your intensity goes, as you live your life. Most people listening are going to be living a normal life, working nine to five jobs or working full-time jobs, having kids, blah, 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 blah. Life can be stressful. If you're doing these things well, you're giving yourself a better foundation to, ha- to handle the stress that's on you, handle the physical stress that you're putting on your body with running, and it's a very physically demanding ex- uh, mode of exercise. If you are not doing these things consistently, not religiously, not overbearingly, just consistently, you will find some detractions in your training. And this is not in the pursuit of perf- uh, perfection, just in the pursuit of better than the day before. You probably should eat more vegetables than you normally do. You should probably eat more fat than you normally do. Carbs are not the only thing that provide energy. You know, to all you runners listening, yes, they're very important. You know, this isn't some keto post. But uh, with that said, the last thing I'll finish with is uh, recovery runs as a part of the kind of more basics. This is a whole other topic in and of itself, but recovery runs and actually running or actually doing active recovery, whether that's maybe cycling on the bike, getting in the pool, I mean, even for, depending on the situation, maybe just even going for walks and then stretching, yoga, that type of thing. Allowing those toxins to kind of flush out, um, as well as your mind to have a break, like you're not pushing, 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 you're just moving, and you're moving forward, even though sometimes, and I think some people get stuck, through, it doesn't feel like you're moving forward because your pace is really slow, it doesn't feel like you're producing something, but that recovery actually allows you to be able to produce more later. And so I will finish with that there. I'm trying to keep these solo episodes 15 to 20 minutes, but uh, more on those basics later. I think those are really key things to talk about. But there you have it. So not working at max speed, not varying up your training enough, different energy systems and how you're going about your training, um, especially relative to the season and the races you're doing. And then not doing the basics, sleep, eating well, recovery runs, um, reducing your stress, those types of things. So there you have it. Um, Thank you for listening. Uh, Like I said earlier, uh, I have a program that I am kind of actually using. I'm going to try to get uh, 10 people or more to kind of be guinea pigs for this Resilient Runner Reset. If you've been following me on Instagram or even Facebook a little bit, you've probably heard me talk about it a little bit. I wasn't fully ready for everything that I needed to do for this. And so I've been, I mean, if you know me at all, I I coach people and um, I've already been doing that. But I would like some uh, new clients to got a discounted rate to what the program will be in the future. I would like some people to help me build out my structure, essentially, give me feedback along the way. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm looking for 10 people. Uh, if you would like any more information about that, feel free to message me, whichever, wherever you're listening to this on, um, whether it's a chunked part of this into from Instagram or on Facebook. Uh, you can DM me or email me at um, Coach Wilson 10459 at gmail.com. Again, thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next episode.